Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for being here today. I'm Howard Zucker. I'm the New York State Health Commissioner. I, I want to thank everyone uh, for joining us. Uh, I especially want to thank Dr. Frieden from the Center for, for Disease Control uh, for partnering with us and for sending uh, his team up to New York. Uh, specifically, I'd like to thank um, uh, Clarissa Lucas, who has joined us here uh, today um, from the CDC and is leading the response team from CDC, and Dr. Jason uh, Kunz, one of the CDC's environmental uh, sampling experts. Uh, we just had a very productive meeting uh, with some of the county health uh, commissioners from around the state and many others that were on the phone. Uh, I'd like to thank New York City uh, Health Commissioner Mary Bassett. Thank you, Mary. Um, Albany County Commissioner of Health Elizabeth Whalen. Thank you. Um, Erie County Commissioner of Health Gail Bernstein. How are you? Thank you. Uh, and Westchester County Commissioner Shalita Am Amler. Thank you. Uh, Suffolk County Commissioner uh, James Tamarkin and Nassau County Commissioner uh, Lawrence Eisenstein. Uh, we're also joined by the Deputy Secretary for Health and Human Services, uh, Paul Francis. Earlier this week, uh, Borough President uh, Ruben Diaz uh, Jr. reached out to the governor to ask for the state for help in tackling what uh, clearly has been a public health issue in the Bronx, uh, Legionnaire's disease. As the Borough President said, this is an all-hands-on-deck situation, and we need all of our partners at every level of government to help address the situation which is why the governor contacted the CDC and brought the team up here today. I want to assure everyone that this disease is not contagious. It's a very important point to make. It is not a contagious disease and that treatment is available. Uh, people with compromised immune systems are at greater risk as they are uh, with many infections and should clearly contact their doctor if they show any flu-like symptoms. Um, uh, it is also important to note that while it's clearly a severe outbreak in the Bronx, uh, this is a statewide issue. We were just talking about this uh, uh, in the past hour, and the governor is monitoring the Legionnaire's disease statewide. On average, the state of New York has about 540 cases each year, uh, and New York uh, State has been doing sampling collection across the Bronx, uh, and the Department of Health's Wadsworth uh, Center, which is our lab, has been doing testing for Legionnaire's disease in the city as well as other parts of the state as well. Uh, during this time, we have been in total coordination with the city officials and other local officials uh, statewide. Uh, yesterday, Governor Cuomo announced that the state will conduct a free testing of any building that wants to have their cooling towers evaluated. Uh, a toll-free number has been set up, and building owners can contact this number, and state health department officials will advise them as to how to collect the sample and where to send it so that the state may test the sample for this Legionella bacteria. So that toll number is 1-888-769-7243. And I'll repeat that. It's 1-888-769-7243. If the building owner does not have adequate knowledge of how to collect the sample, we will provide the owner with technical assistance to facilitate that process. While the state will provide the service of testing the bacteria, it is the responsibility of the owner to keep the facilities clean. We expect that owners of the buildings with these systems are properly maintaining them, and we will hold them accountable if they are not, but we will offer free testing of every system in the state. Uh, our work on this issue does not stop there. Um, but as many of you know, patience is not one of Governor Cuomo's virtues. Uh, and so today we are announcing a more proactive measure. At the governor's direction, I would like to announce that starting tomorrow, uh, the state will begin to deploy teams uh, to the Bronx to help expedite this entire process of testing and making sure that any of the cooling towers potentially at risk are evaluated. Trained personnel will be on hand to facilitate collections of samples in the Bronx to facilitate the testing and ensure that the process is uh, properly up and running. A situation like this requires a great deal of detective work. Uh, clearly, this is a, a sleuth uh, mission of trying to find out where this is happening. And we must get out there. We must root out the problem, uh, cut it off at the source, and, and prevent further spread uh, so that everyone uh, um, obviously uh, recognizes that the disease has, um, has diminished. This deployment will be in cooperation uh, with the CDC and New York City. Uh, long term, the governor has instructed me to review our current health regulations with an eye towards issuing more aggressive regulations to ensure to the greatest extent possible that we are doing everything we can to prevent situations like this uh, from occurring again. The governor has been monitoring the situation all along as concerned that we not only address the health crisis but also assure all the people that, that they have confidence 
in the system and that any anxiety that one may have is addressed as well. The steps that the government has taken will not only address the health crisis but also in the confidence crisis. These programs will be funded by the state of New York. We believe that uh, in a situation like this it is important to assure all residents that the government is confident and performing in a way that instills that confidence. We believe this measure goes a long way to that end and we will also be studying the outbreak of this disease to determine if there should be any other changes to statewide policy concerning the safety and testing of building water systems. I once again would like to thank the CDC uh, and all the county health commissioners who have been here today as well as those on the line uh, for helping us. And I also like to thank the uh, Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr. who has been working with us throughout this entire process. We had an opportunity to be there uh, yesterday as well. We are happy to answer any questions at this point. Thank you. We're working on those. We're working yeah, let, on those let, me, let me just add to that. We're right now mobilizing resources from a number of different agencies in the state. We will definitely have people working on this as of tomorrow, uh, and it will uh, scale as appropriate over time. Why did the city seem to move so slow at the onset of the outbreak, and what can we learn from this? I think we always can learn things from any disease out outbreak that we have. Uh, and we're tackling, you know, when, when specimens come in, uh, they are sent to the lab in the state, uh, and we, we try to identify exactly where the uh, source is. Could we well, hear from the, the CDC? So the state steps in, but why did the city move so slow? I mean, the city has been, I, I mean, the city has been, has been working with us on, on this issue. Can we hear? Are there other things besides cooling towers that are going to be examined, other bigger systems or filtration? I think that the, the issue here is you have to always look at things from both a community standpoint and from, from a hospital-acquired infection. So that's one type of community-acquired infections. The hospitals, we, we always are, are monitoring those. In the communities, we, we to, need to look at any kind of cooling systems that are out there. But there are also issues where you look at spas and other areas where, where the potential is. And, and we will look at all of these areas to, to make sure that there are, um, there are infections that, that are there. Well, we'll, well, you know, we, the met, if there's an outbreak or if there's an infection, we evaluate that at that but moment. Dr. Zucker, yeah. I, I think I should have the opportunity to say sure. words here sure. if I may come in. Uh, thanks very much. We're pleased to join you here and pleased to join the CDC team uh, at, the, uh, at this conversation that we've been having with county uh, health commissioners from around the state. Uh, here in person and also on the phone. I'm joined at the table by uh, Dr. Varma. Perhaps today I should refer to him as Captain Varma. Uh, he is a CDC assignee uh, who is embedded at the health department. And we're very pleased to welcome Dr. Lucas and her team. Uh, we were happy to uh, arrange their visit earlier this week and to welcome them here in New York City. They started arriving yesterday and uh, uh, we are especially uh, happy to be working with them at, at the lab. Uh, I, uh, I want to um, just give you some update on where we stand today and tell you uh, the reason that we are optimistic and uh, retain the confidence that I've expressed in the past that uh, we have a, a good handle on the outbreak in the Bronx. Uh, we have uh, had, as you know, a large outbreak uh, by talking with uh, Commissioners from around the state, we've learned of some other outbreaks that have been going on here in New York City and uh, in upstate counties. So as Dr. Zucker has said, uh, this is a disease that is a, a ubiquitous in our communities and occasionally occurs in outbreak form. Uh, but we recognize the importance of collaboration in dealing with such a large outbreak that we've had in the Bronx. And I want to acknowledge before I turn to the most recent numbers that we've been working really closely with the State Health Department. Their lab has been absolutely terrific. Um, and we uh, also welcome the expertise from the CDC, uh, uh, particularly in laboratory um, areas. I just, I know that, that we were drifting into a conversation about re, sort of reopening the investigation, starting to look for other potential sources. Uh, we have been explaining to you that the epidemiology of this outbreak is consistent with the community exposure uh, we have identified uh, cooling towers that tested positive uh, for, this, um, for this bacteria. They have been cleaned. And now today we have a total of 101 cases. Uh, that's an additional case that came to our attention yesterday. 
Uh, it actually was diagnosed a couple of days ago. Uh, and we are very heartened by the continued decline in occurrences of cases. Uh, we have, uh, yes, this is the smallest number that we've seen since this epidemic began. Uh, it's matched by other data that confirm our optimism. The em emergency department visits for pneumonia have also declined. And when we look at information that patients give us on the onset of symptoms, uh, we haven't seen people with newly, newly sick in the past week. Uh, all of this fits together uh, with an assessment that the cleaning of the cooling towers has led to a, um, uh, led to a, the, a reduction in the exposure, although, of course, if we've all been saying this is uh, something that we see diagnosed throughout the year. So I am really grateful that we're going to have um, help in continuing to ensure that we found every cooling tower in the, in the South Bronx and uh, ensure that it's cleaned. Uh, we are getting help from our surrounding counties. Uh, we're now going to be getting help in a very organized way from the state. So thank you, Dr. Zucker. Thank you. It was a long intervention, and I appreciate your patience. Can you hear from the CDC about, sure. about how the nation as a whole Sure. You know, are we in danger in any way? How are you handling this? How did New York City handle the problem in your estimation? So um, I would say that uh, New York City's response, uh, the timing of it has been very typical to what we have seen in uh, other outbreak situations. And I think they have done a very good job in mobilizing their resources and reaching out to their partners to, for overflow. I think they're taking this very seriously. And I'm encouraged by their proactive uh, response that they're, they're trying to have for prevention. And, and citizens of the United States in general, what should we know about this disease and, and, and the symptoms and containing it and what you guys as, as a nation are doing? Um, this is a, a very underreported disease nationwide. Um, I think that situations like this where we have explosive outbreaks, um, do serve to educate the public um, that uh, this is a disease that is very common. Um, it's often difficult to diagnose and it's very, very difficult to trace a lot of times, especially in a community acquired situation. So I think this can serve to educate the public and really um, help more business uh, and property managers to understand the importance of maintenance of water systems. I think one of the other thing we should also mention is that it's important for the public also to realize that if you have some to contact your doctor because there are many different types of pneumonias as, as we know and there's different treatments for all of them. So it would be really important to pick this up. This is sort of a finicky kind of uh, bacteria. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it takes a little while to grow it as we, we've noticed and I think it's important for that to be done. Dr. You mean six positive towers? Is that what you? Yes. We the the number we are continuing to look for cooling towers, and when we find one that is has evidence of Legionella, we clean it. Uh, we told you about the initial five towers that were positive, and that was that's the correct number. So what, oh, okay, so there's no number six. There was no additional one found. Uh, no, I, I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm not, qu you're talking about cooling towers or cooling towers that tested positive? I guess cooling towers. Because there are, uh, there are a, a much larger number of cooling towers than. What's the number you're referring to? All cooling towers that we found uh, are being cleaned. Uh, regardless, as part of the preventive maintenance program that our colleagues from the CDC have been talking about. So, I'm sorry, the, the, so I the, the initial were five. The initial five. And then there was a, subsequently there was a sixth. We're continuing to look and we find them, we test them, and we clean them. Yeah, and that, that's the process that the that's, state that's will, will help. We will help. And the way, yes. Dr. Lenz and Lucas, have, is there precedent for, for clusters of towers? Obviously, clusters of yeah, so that's, that's a very good way. question. But, but are, uh, uh, yeah. is, is there transmission among the towers? The towers. I, yeah. 
Well, you can ask. One, one of the things, this is where Wadsworth Lab comes into play to try to look at the DNA fingerprinting of this information. And, and once we have that information, we'll provide that with you. you know, like any disease, there's a certain type that, that we are looking at, a specific subtype for Legionella, and also to try to tra uh, match up uh, both towers, match up patients. There were, unfortunately, some patients who had died, looking at the autopsy specimens and growing them as well. But I turn to the CDC for additional. And so if you're asking if there has been documented cases of this in the United States, I would say no, not really. We haven't really seen this, but neither have we seen a lot of outbreaks in such a densely po populated area where the towers would be so physically close to each other. So as, as how would Trans, you get the tests and so on, but as a, as a mechanical matter or a no. theological matter, how would it be transmitted from one, one corner to Well, this is where it goes through the air. Exactly. So this is, it'll go through the air. So you have uh, the power of, of some of the, the vents and the ducts, the, the particles that could miss that could be carried that way. So that is something, and this is where sometimes you do like plume modeling to try to track and try to figure out exactly where it went from one spot to another. But it also you have to remember this ties into weather, it ties into temperature, it ties into humidity, moisture, it also ties into what point during the season we are some of these towers, you, know, you, you want to get them clean, things uh, build up inside of towers uh, uh, over the course of time, but they're not maintained. <laughs> This is where we work on the epidemiology of all of this, and this is where we're trying to track and, and match up you know, patients and towers and try and figure out the information on this. Well, we'll wait till we get some of the lab results back. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we have all of the epidemiology. That means the distribution of the cases are, is consistent with a community environmental exposure to Legionella. That means that we found a geographically circumscribed uh, outbreak, but one that wasn't limited to a building, for example, which would be consistent with perhaps something in the plumbing or something like that. That's what turned our attention to the cooling towers. We've identified cooling towers that were contaminated with Legionella. They have been decontaminated, and we are now seeing a resultant decline in cases. We now today are giving you data that we have the lowest number of new cases uh, reported in the last 24 hours that we've seen, and other data uh, match with the, uh, with the um, observation that we're seeing a downturn in this, uh, in this outbreak, which is very good news and is consistent with us having found the exposure. Uh, so the exposure was contaminated cooling towers, uh, one or more of the five that we identified. Dr. Bassett, so these Dr. five yes. buildings, uh, these five cooling towers, what proximity are they? Can you say within what sort of radius they were contained in? Well, I've walked around, around them, including with Dr. Zucker the other day with the um, borough president. They're really close together. Like within two, I, I, can you tell us two blocks? <clears throat> Oh, it's yeah, more it's probably more like within mile. 10 blocks, 5, 10 blocks. You, you also have to remember that this is a very populated area of, of the city, uh, and so even, you know, two blocks away, there are many people that are living in that area. You did have a question? Yes. Dr. Zucker, how would you evaluate the city health department's response? And they were working with the city on, as I mentioned before, we're working on the city. Uh, information that comes in, we've worked with them. Uh, on many other uh, outbreaks, as you know, including Ebola, and the, the labs that, that have been brought to our attention have been uh, sent up to Wadsworth Lab. But I ask you, how do you evaluate their response, not whether you're working I think that what we're, we're trying to do is, is also, this is more than just a city response, so we're looking at this from a state level as well. The city has an you know, excellent team of, uh, of uh, public health experts there, uh, and we work with them on, on all different areas. The Bronxboro president contacted the governor and asked that the state come in. So when, when there is an outbreak, particularly something which is not just one area. So we, we talk about this in, about this being in the Bronx, but when you speak to some of the other health commissioners, commissioners at the table, we realize that this is in other areas, areas and there's uh, Erie County uh, has had uh, a case in some of the other uh, areas of the state. So it becomes a state response, and so we need to uh, tackle this from, from that area. All right, so Dr. Last Dr. Question. What, what, what will the, the state workers be doing in that the city workers either weren't or couldn't do. Well, it's expanding the capacity and the scale with which we're able to so do the sample collection. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.